With a few BIOS modifications and an overclock on this Radeon 890MI GPU, I'm able to run a lot of newer AAA games at 1440p on this mini PC. It's actually pretty impressive for integrated graphics, and in this video, I want to show you exactly what this thing can do. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be overclocking the new Menace Forum Elite Mini AI370 Mini PC. And I've done a video on this, we've taken a look at it in its stock form. It's a great performer, but I'm always looking to get just a little bit more out of these iGPUs. And with what we've got here, it's totally possible to do so, but it's not recommended by the manufacturer, so keep that in mind. In this video, I've got a lot to cover from the BIO settings that we're going to be using here and 1440p gaming on this machine. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $20.40 for a full Windows 11 Pro key. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA. You can get 30% off. Okay, so what we've got here is the new Menace Forum Elite Mini AI370. And this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. We've got 12 cores, 24 threads, great performing mobile CPU. But my favorite part about this new chip is actually the iGPU. Because with this, we get the Radeon 890M. 16 CUs as opposed to the older 780M's 12 CUs. It's also based on RDNA 3.5 and it'll clock up to 2900 megahertz. Along with this, these new AI9HX370 mini PCs are using LP DDR5X, so it is much faster. And in this, it's running at 7500 megahertz, but we're gonna be doing a little bit of RAM overclocking and iGPU overclocking with this machine. With the Menace Forum Elite Mini here, going into the stock BIOS won't allow us to do any kind of overclocking. There are a couple power profiles that we can change. We can change the RAM amount for the iGPU, but there are ways around this. So this is their BIOS. It's a bit locked down, but there is an application that I personally like to use known as Smokeless UMAF. And basically what I've done here is just download it. I put it on a USB drive, and this is going to allow us to get to the hidden settings in an AMD BIOS. And this is what Smokeless UMAF looks like now. So I've just booted it up from a USB and we've used this on the Steam Deck in the past on the channel. AMD overclocking. Again, can't stress that enough. They do not recommend doing any of this, but I want to show you what I have here because we were able to take this HX370 up. Not much from manual CPU overclocking, but from precision boost override. Down here, we've got our maximum GPU boost clock override and we can go up 200 megahertz, so I've got it there. Max CPU boost clock override. I've just gone up by 25, and I could experiment with this a bit more, but really when it comes down to it, we've got a lot of CPU performance, even at those stock clocks. What I really wanted to do here was up that GPU limit, and unfortunately we can only go up 200 megahertz, which is gonna bring this up to 3100 megahertz. But there's another thing we can do here, because from AMD CBS, UMC common options, LP DDR options, timing configuration, active memory timing settings. I've enabled this and I've taken it from 75 to 8,000. So we've got an overclock on the iGPU, overclock on the RAM, a little bit of overboost on the CPU with this thing. And from my testing so far, I mean, I've been seeing some really amazing performance out of this machine. I'm gonna go ahead and save these settings and then we'll get right into Windows. Okay, so now that I've got the bio set, just wanted to give you a look at a few things. We've got that AI9 HX370. Our RAM has been properly overclocked from 7,500 up to 8,000. And I did dedicate eight gigs of VRAM to the 890MI GPU. As for TDP, I've got CPU-Z here. And what we're gonna do is just stress this out. Right down here, we've got hardware info, and you'll see this jump on up to around 85 to 90 watts. So it does come down just a bit every once in a while, down to around 78, but this is how I've got it set up right now. 
And I mean, it's been working fine. I haven't had any crashes or anything like that. But again, this is not recommended by the manufacturer. Just keep that in mind. And of course, the last thing we did was overclock the iGPU. If I run Furmark, we've got the GPU clock listed here up to 3100 megahertz. That's all we could do. Up 200 megahertz from the BIOS. There's just no way around it. I've tried third-party applications like x86 tuning utility to take it up a bit. But with these PCs the way it is right now, up to 31 from 29. So we're definitely pushing this little thing to the limit. And the first thing I wanted to show you here were a few benchmarks. And then we're going to get right into some gaming. Got a lot of stuff that I ran at 1440. And for an iGPU, really impressed by the performance. But, you know, the newer AAA stuff, we did have to take it back down to 1080 if you don't want to use frame gen. But here's the benchmarks I have. First up, Geekbench 6, and at the top, we've got the Ryzen AI9 HX370 with the modified BIOS settings that we did, and we really didn't pay attention to CPU performance, but we still got a nice little gain here. Single core, 2,762, multi, 15,634. And if you take a look below it, I also tested it with the stock settings, 2594 on single, 1598 on multi. And just to kind of sum everything up, one of the best 8000 series mobile chips that we saw was the 8945HS, and that's coming in with a single core of 2405, multi 11614. And I kind of expected the HX370 would beat this out because we are working with more cores here. We've got 12 cores and 24 threads as opposed to 8 cores and 16 in that Ryzen 8000 chip. But the main thing I was shooting for here was better iGPU performance out of this new Radeon 890M, and we definitely got it here. With the BIOS settings that we're using now, 4,279 and 3D Mark Time Spy. With the stock settings, this scored a 3,688. And one of the best scores that I was able to get out of the Radeon 780M, which has less CEUs, came in now Ryzen 7000 and 8000. Basically the same iGPU we have in the ROG Ally X with that Ryzen Z1 Extreme. 3,647, but this was using the 8700G, a desktop chip. I was able to take that TDP way up and run 8,000 megahertz RAM to get us up to that score. So yeah, with a little bit of an overclock and faster RAM with this Radeon 890M, it's definitely coming ahead by quite a bit here in these synthetic benchmarks. But now I wanted to show you how this thing really handles gaming. And the first one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. I've run through a couple tests here. This is just kind of basic, usually what I run on the 780M and a handheld. 1080 low with FSR set to performance. With the built-in benchmark, we got an average of 88 FPS. Now, I know there's some people out there that just don't want to play their games at low, and I completely understand that. Personally, on a smaller screen, I don't mind doing that. But we do have some newer technologies here that will allow us to kind of take these settings on up. Like FSR 3 frame gen that CD Projekt Red has added to Cyberpunk 2077. So now here it is running at 1080p, high settings, FSR 3 frame gen, native resolution. So we're not using any kind of scaling here, just the built-in frame gen. We're seeing an average of around 77 FPS with this game, which is really great for an iGPU. And usually when we run this game, we got to take it down to low or even 900p on the 780M. And to tell you the truth, I don't even think I've ever run it at high 1080 on the 780M. Pretty sure we wouldn't hit 60 with it, even with some frame gen on. So yeah, we're seeing a nice bump here with this 890M. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this little iGPU can actually run PC games at 1440p. Albeit, it's not going to run every AAA game at 1440, but I've got quite a few here that I've tested. And the first one I wanted to show you here was Forza Horizon 5. You can see we're at 1440p and we're not using any kind of scaling, so FSR is completely off. And from the graphic settings, we're using that high preset. This game runs amazingly on the 890M at 1440p. I was pretty impressed, but it is an easier one to run. But I don't want to downplay it because it's still really impressive that an iGPU like this can run a game at 1440 high settings with no frame gen and no scaling. I mean, we're at a true 1440 with this game. Well over 60. In fact, by the end of this, I had an average of 87 FPS on this iGPU with Forza Horizon 5. Next up, Spider-Man Remastered, and I was really hoping that I wouldn't have to use any scaling with this, but what I did was go to 1440p, we're at the high preset, and I enabled IGTI scaling. 
With this game, I personally like using the built-in scaler. It's known as the IGTI scaler as opposed to FSR. I do see a jump in performance even on these AMD chips. And going into this, I really wasn't sure what to expect, but it looks like I'm getting an average of around 72 FPS with this. Now, some people might want a little more out of it, and in that case, I would just take it down to medium settings. Game still looks good. Or if you don't mind playing it at low with no scaling, you could go down there and still get over that 60 mark. I also wanted to see how this would handle Overwatch 2 at 1440, so we're at high settings with no FSR. Not too bad, but you know, enabling some of that would help out a bit. I was kind of hoping we'd be up in the 80s with it. By the end, we had an average of 75, which is still really playable. You could always go ahead and turn V-Sync on at 60 and have a pretty good time with this one. Red Dead 1, 1440, high settings. The game itself is an older game. It launched on the Xbox 360, but recently was ported over to PC. And with this one, I was pretty sure we'd see decent performance because so far with this one, I've tested it on a lot of different systems. It actually runs quite well on a lot of the iGPU setups that I've tested. And with no FSR, high settings, 1440, we're seeing an average of 90 FPS. The final game I wanted to test at 1440 was Doom Eternal. I'm using medium settings right now and maybe adding a little bit of that dynamic resolution scale would help because every once in a while I did see it dip under or you could take it down to a low medium mix. But given the age of this game, I originally went into this at high expecting it to run over 60 at 1440. Unfortunately, it just wasn't holding up at high settings. I also tested out God of War Ragnarok, and with this we did have to drop it down to 1080p unless you want to go way down with it and enable Ultra Performance FSR. You could run this over 60, but it just doesn't look great. So the way I've got it set up right now is 1080 medium with FSR frame gen enabled. Really good experience. I mean, on this HX 370, I'm seeing averages in the high 70s. And if you take a look at Afterburner, this APU is drawn up to around 72 watts every once in a while. I mean, it's really putting a load on the CPU and GPU with this setup. We're actually up to 3000 megahertz on the iGPU, actually a little bit more than 3000. Either way, the game does run great on the Radeon 890M with frame gen enabled. So in the end, with this overclock on that Ryzen AI 9 HX 370 in this Menace Forum Mini PC, we're seeing amazing performance out of this iGPU. I know not a lot of people are going to go through this, and the manufacturer definitely doesn't recommend doing this, but I really wanted to see what we could get out of this system, and that HX 370 is turning out to be one of the best mobile chips that we've tested over here on the channel. And as for that iGPU, of course, compared to something like the 780M, it is coming way ahead, especially with these tweaks enabled. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on this chip, just let me know in the comments below. And one thing I think I might do in the future is just install Bazai on this with all of the tweaks enabled. We're doing everything from the BIOS, so we could get these same settings over in Linux, and we might see a nice performance increase when we're running games with Proton on this machine. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn a little more about this PC, I'll leave links to their official website in the description. That's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.